there's something I deeply admire about the Nigerian spirit, which is a, and I think this cuts across ethnicity. We have a kind of striving. There's a kind of, you know, we're able to, people laugh at life, and also people push back at life. And it's a way of looking at the world that, that, I, that I admire very much and that I don't find in, in sort of what we like to call the West. Hello and welcome to the Africa News Network. For me, gender matters very much. I'm very interested in gender, but not as a charity case, not as a case of bring women in because that way you'll show that you're progressive. No, it's bring women in because they constitute half of the human population in the world and because they are just as able, because there's, so, there's talent there, because um, there are abilities that we're not harnessing. And you know, I think it is improving slightly, but it's still very frustrating. And I mean, it cuts across every level. I think really what's so important is we have to change the way we raise our children. And I say this every opportunity I have, our boys and girls. I think also that I should say that gender is also very unfair on boys because I think what it does is that it raises these ridiculous expectations for what it means to be a man. So you have a man who's being told, you know, you can't cry because you're male or um, you don't have a job but you have to pay because you're the man, right? And, and all of these things which I think children start to learn from very young. And I think the way that and we, can, we can change it, I mean, it's, it's very changeable because these are cultural, they're not biological. But what is changing though, is that I, I think that my generation, people who are raising, who are, who are having children now, I think they're looking at it differently. And I think it's also because it's a generation that has watched their parents. I have many friends now who are raising their children very differently from how they were raised. I have a woman who was saying to me a few days ago, she said, I don't do gender when it comes to telling my kids what to do at homework. So she says, um, when it's time to walk in the kitchen, my boy and my girl are walking in the kitchen. I also think that generation of men who will become um, fathers in 25 years probably will look at child rearing differently from, from their own fathers. They might not be as appalled by the idea of helping take care of their own children. <laughs> You've written quite a lot on, on education and there's a rise in private education here and across Africa which is giving more and more kids a good start. Uh, yet even when it's low cost, there's an increasing amount of evidence that shows that it's still not available to the poorest families. Do you imagine a risk where we start seeing education actually starting to reinforce inequality rather than reducing it? Increasingly I find myself questioning, it's not just about education, it's what kind of education? Because we just say education, right? And my thing is what kind of education are we giving people? And also I really don't believe that everybody has to study to become an academic, for example. There are people who are, who are skilled and talented at different things, and there is a sense in which the education we talk about is about streamlining people or, or people into one thing, and which means that we don't have diversity. And, and also, I think, um, in a place like Nigeria, for example, because we've come to value the idea of a university degree, so now that's what everybody talks about, right? And, um, and for me, I just I find myself questioning that. I think, well, what if we had places where people are trained in agriculture, but also these places that are not considered somehow less prestigious, because that's the problem. Mm -hmm.